Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Today, well, it's about six in the morning. Oh, ah, still asleep. We are going on a different journey today. We are going to New Plymouth for tattoo convention. I am going to take you to my work. It is my job to tattoo. And uh, the convention in New Plymouth is um, about 11th year, I think, today. Uh, of this weekend, so I'm uh, gonna go for work. I have all my gear packed in a rainproof bag. As you can see, up over the ranges, it's raining. We live right underneath the hills, so um, it has been drizzling and raining the whole night. I can see rain over there somewhere, but on the other side, we have some sunshine. What? Well, there is sunshine somewhere, all the time, anywhere, at some point, in it. But hey, hopefully we don't get too wet. Well, I have a rain gear and everything is bagged in uh, waterproof bags, so it should be fine. And uh, yeah, it's a bit chilly this morning. Oh, well, that's what you get. We're going back on my trumpy. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, so let's just head to New Plymouth. We'll stop in Palmerston North for breakfast. And uh, yeah, all right, let's journey up. I'll see you on the road. In a world of highways and motorways and roads and uh, vehicular movement and migration and congestion, there is a world where uh, sometimes it's a bit of a higher concentration of, you could call them even bugs or animals or creatures 
creatures is a good way. I call them sparkles. In some other locations, some other countries, they could be called pigs or other names. Me, personally, I don't like the word pig for this particular creature because I quite like pork. In fact, it's my favorite type of protein. I am Slovakian and 90% of our meats are pork. So, pigs are really nice. So, I prefer to use sparkles because somehow in my head, you know, I don't know how to put it into words. Sparkle seems... I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> you might agree, you might not. But in Wairapa there is a uh, higher concentration of sparkles. There seem to be everywhere, even this morning at 6 in the morning, just between Featherston and Masterton, I saw three sparkles. And they all were catching people at 6 in the morning. When you move out of Wairarapa, it doesn't seem to be as prevalent, as uh, heavy. They seem to disperse. But maybe they congregate around the capital city and the young sparkles are uh, pushed out to do their rite of passage. So they collect their prey. And uh, yeah, so if you ever come to our region, you should keep it easy. Take it easy. Because sparkles are everywhere and they will prey on you. So just watch out. We are just about in Palmerston North. The weather we have left behind. As you can see, clouds over there, they are on the other side of the hill. On this, on this side of the hill, we are like this. How about that? It's very cool. So I don't even know if my voice is gonna be heard. I'm yelling, traffic's noisy, I have earplugs in. Uh, anyhow, enough talking. Let's go have a breakfast. All right. And let's get into the cafe. And we are in the cafe. Yeah. Well, since I was talking about sparkles and little piggies um, and pork, I got pork for breakfast. <laughs> I uh, talked myself into it, inspired. All right, let's have some food. Food for my belly, food for my baby's belly.
Young sparkles, you see, they have a thing to prove. They have uh, no life experiences and they have a nice flashy lights and they want to show off to their uh, superiors in a group. So they work extremely hard to, uh, to prove themselves, to catch the prey. They obey all the rules. They uh, don't really have much of a common sense, really. They just follow the rules of nature to the dot. There is no leeway, one way or another. They see their prey and they go, they pounce. And you're done. And there is no way of getting out of the trap. Yeah. They are very much are interesting. Again, in some regions they are much more common where they congregate and train for their adulthood. Mm. Yeah. We'll see how many we will come across today. Okay. Let's continue our journey through the Sparkle Dome. I'll see you. pretty much set up for the show. Uh, people come tomorrow. I'm just gonna park up, chill out, and uh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Good, you well? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm good. Oh, just here on, the, on this side. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so that's where we're gonna be working tomorrow. So now I'm just gonna find accommodation, park up, and uh, have a new downtime. Find some food for dinner and lunch. Alrighty. Hello, baby. Okay. Hello, baby. Chirp, 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 chirp. It is very hard to uh, distinguish whether the sparkle is adult or juvenile. They usually hide in a shell. The shell is very bright, stripy, and often makes bright blue and red light. You know, if that's happening, you should at all cost either stop or hide. It is not very safe to be around that. 
Yeah, but it, uh, it is just a stroke of luck whether you find a mature battle or a juvenile who's trying to prove it's I am walking now in New Plymouth and uh maybe maybe we can see one in a while. Keep my eye here and I'll keep my distance. We don't wanna get too close. Well 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 um we haven't seen any sparkles in wild but we are going to see a friend of mine we have never met before I just know him online uh, Matt and he's another chopper guy so um, we're gonna see some choppers while we're waiting uh, Matt is uh, one of the retro rockers uh, it's a group of guys a club what come as, comes out of uh, New Plymouth here they have a peeps all around New Zealand really but what it means it's just retro these guys riding um, I think any bikes prior 80s I suppose and they build choppers um, the big boss Jake we were supposed to make an interview with him uh, when I went to Topo and I got a flat tire on my iron so um, that didn't work out so uh, Matt is another part of the club so um his workshop is going to be pretty interesting. Their bikes are like his job when you see it. I don't know, it's like a, a six feet, maybe eight feet long fork. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm exaggerating. You'll see. But it's a, it's a cool his bike. Um, Jake has a Captain something bike. And I don't know if it's a flathead or penhead or something. Uh, it's a cool machine. Uh, nice paint job. He has his exhaust uh, sticking out about six feet up in the air, and I'm not exaggerating. Uh, it's cool, bunch of people. So, and they know uh, various people know a lot about these old bikes, and uh, I think Matt built his own stuff too. So, um, yeah, we shall see. Um, he's on his way. He's living. Uh, he's probably quite a bit far from here, but he's making time. He ran away from his family to meet me. So, uh, thank you, mate. <laughs> uh, it's cool. We were kind of circling around each other for a long time on the internet, talking, and this is the first time we're gonna catch up in person. So, there we go. We are at the convention. Uh, people are already waiting outside. And I'll show you my booth and then we will walk through later. Uh, this is gonna be quite busy. <laughs> I was too late. <laughs> Alright.
my booth is over here. And um, yeah, I'll just walk you through. Well, it's a bit quiet right now, but this is gonna be pumping in about two hours. You won't be able to walk through here. So it's nice to get in early and have a look at all this stuff. is finished well it didn't uh, it's about three o'clock 3 30 the show goes till 11 but I am um, um, these days I started doing small tattoos um, rather than doing uh, 10 hour pieces every single day so I do a couple small tattoos and then go for a ride to uh, enjoy myself a little so um, today I'm meeting some guys from called Kiwi Rally and we are going to uh, have a little ride around the block and some kind of cool roads so um yeah i came here to uh, get changed in my leathers and um go for a ride with them so um that should be fun uh, let's do it see you on the road
not gonna lead it off. Three markers up here. When you're ready. Here I come, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for hand and clock. Ninth off, lead off. Oscar, Dino, Johnny, Sam, Brian, Q, Ken, and Jim. How good, ladies and gentlemen, there's Levi Gerwin, Carlos Hanlon, Mac Franklin, Ryder Bay, and William Platt. Get him, boy. Oh, damn. How good. How good, you brothers. Let's go. Yes. Alrighty. I didn't really film anything today from the show. Um, well, except the motorcycles and uh, bicycle jumping. Um, I finished tattooing early, well I was gonna do some more work, but then um, I went uh, look outside and look at that. So I decided um, to bail early and um, going for a run, enjoy myself, not work all weekend. I don't know if you can see there in the distance. You can just see the volcano, Mount Taranaki. So, uh, I am um, going to see if I can uh, go for a run over there to climb up the hill. So, um, I did it last year. The weather is awesome today too. So, uh, I'm gonna try again, see how far I can get. Uh, I won't be filming it. Um, I don't even know when I'm gonna keep my bike gear because there is nowhere to put it. So, I'm gonna run in, I'm gonna ride it's only 10 kilometers or so, so I'm just going to ride in my um, uh, bike gear and uh, hopefully put my uh, helmet and jacket in the bushes. So, uh, uh, yeah, and then hopefully no one steals it. So, uh, yeah, let's go for a run. I'll uh, see you on the way home. Adios. Hello, hello. Tattoo show wrapped up. I run over the weekend maybe uh, about 30 kilometers. Maybe 25. Tired. Heading to the town to get some dinner and uh, see some friends. And um, yeah, tomorrow we'll ride home. You know, Plymouth is uh, land of the Mount Taranaki, the volcano. They came to film a bunch of stuff from, uh, uh, I don't know, I think even the, uh, what was it, the Last Samurai with Tom Cruise was filmed here because the Taranaki looks like Mount Fuji in, um, in Japan. Uh, but yeah, it's show's over. I had a good time. I had a lot of private time for exercise was awesome. Uh, tomorrow I'll go around the mountain. Hopefully it's not going to be bad weather. It's a really cool ride. So uh, I'll try to film that. And uh, well, if you hang on, you'll see. Okay. Um, I also found that uh, my rear fork is leaking fork oil. Well, obviously no other oil is fork. Um, and I was thinking, oh, Ah, oh, at least it's uh, on the side where there is no disc brake. <laughs> no, well, that's fine. Good morning, good morning. Today is the fourth day. I think it's Monday. It's my last day here in New Plymouth. Bike's ready. And the weather looks nice here. 
There's some clouds over the mountain. Oh, mountains there. I was wrong. <laughs> but we're gonna skirt around the mountain on the um, west side coast. And um, it's a cool journey, so we'll uh, uh, we'll record that somehow. And um, yeah, I don't. Everything is semi stripped. I should be fine. I did find a leak. You can see oil in there, and it dribbled down, uh, lubricating my shaft. <laughs> that sounded funny, didn't it? Um, but uh, I can see that the oil must have sprayed everywhere from the fork. But um, that should uh, hopefully hold us home. Um, and then I'll have to take it apart and rebuild the fork, I suppose. I am pretty sure while back I bought um, a fork kit for the bike. I just never got to it, so um, I think it's about the time. All right, enough jibbering away. Ah, <sighs> yesterday, oh, and I keep talking, didn't I? I went to the after party, but I'm not exactly a um, big talker or socializer in a big group, so I bailed after an hour and a half and um, just chilled out by myself. Um, yeah, now I'm just gonna get the petrol and uh, I will forfeit the breakfast and uh, just get on the journey. All right, let's get to the petrol station. Alrighty, let's get some power juice. All right, power juice in, we filled up. Bye bye, New Plymouth. I will see you next year for the tattoo show and maybe we can hang out with the retro rockers at some point, see the choppers. Alrighty, I was a busy week. I had so many activities, riding and tattooing and running and all that stuff mixed together. So uh, it will be nice to sit in a saddle for a day and uh, take it easy home. Hopefully the fork will be fine, but uh, I'll make it happen. Alrighty, I'll see you on the road.
the console of my map. Uh, I just use my cell phone, it's my uh, pocket. It gives me time to sit and chill out for a bit. We are heading to a place called Aurora. Hello, car. This, oh. As a child, we used to draw a ship. It was a Russian steamship called Aurora and had four chimneys. So as a child, I remember drawing it. Big ship with four chimneys and drive big Aurora on it all the time. It was so impressive. The Russian engineering. All right, let's keep going. Glimpses of the mountain. We just arrived to Wanganui, uh, just refueled, <laughs> and uh, yeah, met a friend here. Haven't seen him a uh, very, very long time, maybe even eight years. And he's a he was amazing artist. He uh, dropped it. He's not doing it anymore. But um, funny how you just meet up people at the petrol stations. Mm. Another piece about sparkles. I haven't seen them pretty much since we left water up, but not a single car, which is kind of interesting. And sometimes they do come uh, very masquerade, how do you say it, um, covered, hidden. They have no stripes. They are totally looking like a public car, so they can surprise you with a little flashy sparkly lights when you don't expect it, when you least expect it. So, um, yeah, they can play tricks with you. You better watch out. Um, well, let's see. You know, I'm kind of interested to see whether I go all the way to Masterton. And from then, we'll start seeing them everywhere when we get close to the hive. All right. Let's ride. Well, I go to the farmers to know. <laughs> and the funniest thing is that um, as soon as I um, went away from uh, Manganui petrol station and I was saying that I haven't seen any sparkles, I saw three of them. Um, maybe even four. And the last one was here already blinking. It's flashing everywhere. Um, yeah, I was quite nice not seeing them, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know if I get it on the camera, but not. But uh, they've been around. 
Oh, they're always around, aren't they? It was just interesting that the last two days I haven't seen any. So, um, um, yeah, get some food and uh, head home. I'll uh, see you in the garage. Oh, wait. And we are back. <laughs> I had to go and undress because it's boiling here. It's almost 30 degrees. Uh, all the way from New Plymouth to almost Masterton was cold. I had thermals on and hoodie and jacket and, uh, and then about 10 kilometers before Masterton the temperature just go up. Man, hot ass. Well, um, we are home. It was a nice little neat ride. Hopefully you enjoy watching it. Um, you have a little glimpses of Tattoo Show. I didn't really feel much there, but that's okay. I know, it's a motorcycle channel, not Tattoo Channel. Um, if you want to see like one of the first early videos of mine, there are some time lapses of tattooing when this channel was actually about tattooing until uh, last year so feel free to watch those if you're interested and um yeah thank you for watching for those who lasted all the way till the end um you're awesome thank you for subscribing so thank you for commenting and um this friday well th when this video comes out i'll be working but that friday is another protest drive in a city where everybody is going to uh park in front of the acc offices to block their car parks and try to cause them a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, grievance or whatever you want to say, inconvenience, I should say. Um, so we'll get noticed about this registration race. So um, yeah, I'll work on Friday, but hopefully I can get, on, get it done early and um, then I'll jump on a bike and shoot to the city to have a look. Uh, if anything's happening, it might, might be just nothing, but uh, nobody's there, but uh, I'll give it a go anyway. Um, okay, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.